Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. In this quick lecture, we'll talk about derivatives and integrals involving inverse trigonometric functions. Once again, I want to remind you, no need to be worried about, uh, you know, mugging up all these things, no need to remember all these things by heart. Just see the ma main ideas in this lecture and when you see these functions being used in practice, you will not be surprised, that's all, okay? So let's see this, all right. So how do you think of the derivative of sine inverse of x, okay? So you will get some very interesting looking expressions here. So f of x, let's say, is sine inverse of x. I'm interested in f prime, isn't it? So the way to do derivatives for inverse functions is to first consider the forward function itself and sort of invert it. So f of x is sine inverse of x means sine f of x is x, isn't it? And we integ and we differentiate this guy, sine f of x equals x. If you do a dif different derivative on both sides here, you, by the chain rule, you're going to get cos f of x times f prime of x equals 1, right? Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of sine f of x is cosine f of x times f prime of x. From here, you get this wonderful simple formula that f prime of x, right, which is what I wanted, is 1 by cosine f of x and that is 1 by root of 1 minus sine square f of x. And what is sine square f of x? It's just x, x square, right? So it's 1 by root of 1 minus x square. So using this trick, we get that the derivative of f sine inverse of x is 1 by root of 1 minus x square, okay? But you have to be paying some attention here when, the, when you take the square root, should I take positive square root or negative square root, okay? So this is a confusion you should have, but you should, you should, you should clearly settle it. Now f of x is between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2, isn't it? Sine inverse of x, my, my range was minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. So in that range, cosine is greater than 0. You can check that, you can check that from the plot in minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 cos fx is greater than 0. So you have to take the positive square root here. So it works out as 1 by root of 1 minus x square, okay? So cos inverse of x is pi by 2 minus sine inverse of x and using that, if you do a derivative, you will get minus 1 by root of 1 minus x square for cos inverse of x derivative. So these are all formulae that, you know, you might have seen in school, Maybe you mugged it up, but we won't expect you to remember them, but at least you should know that this is how it happens. Like sine inverse of x derivative is 1 by root of 1 minus x square. Okay, so this is like a stand, nice relationship that you're getting. Okay, you can do for tan also, you can do the exact same thing, you'll get 1 by 1 plus x square. So you're getting these rational kind of expressions, rational and square root type of expressions when you do a derivative for inverse trigonometric functions. Okay, so that's a nice thing to remember, right? Inverse trigonometric functions, if you do a derivative, you get rational. Log x, if you do a derivative, you get 1 by x, right? So likewise, all these, you know, complicated functions that we define, trigonometric, inverse trigonometric, inverse trigonometric, particularly the derivative ends up being some rational form, square root, something and all, uh, ends up coming. And you can see the proof here, I don't want to go through it. It's just the same kind of method and using trigonometric identities. So you use trigonometric identities here. Likewise, here also you use trigonometric identities and you get these results. Cotangent again, it goes to minus one by one plus x squared, okay? So you can also do for cosecant inverse and secant inverse. This, this is a little bit tricky. First of all, I mean, mod x is greater than or equal to one, only then uh, these are indefined. And this f of x has one complicated range. And uh, if you do this, you will get cotangent f of x. And uh, you know, just the same method as before, cosecant f of x, I can put x. What do I do with cotangent f of x, right? Uh, it turns out it, this is a little bit complicated, right? So f of x is in this range and uh, cotangent x may be positive or negative, but the sign is the same as sine of x. So this cotangent f of x with the sign becomes, uh, you know, this sine of x, sine of x uh, times root of x squared plus one. So x times sine of x is mod x, okay? So, I mean, it's okay if you didn't follow every argument here, but it's it's sort of, uh, carefully done, the sign needs to be carefully done and you will get a minus 1 by mod x root of x squared minus 1 for the derivative. Okay, still, uh, you know, some uh, rational type of expression with a square root, but mod x also makes an appearance. Okay, by a very similar argument, you can show secant inverse x prime is 1 by mod x root of x squared minus 1. Of course, this is valid only when mod x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, it cannot be valid for other cases. Okay, so, uh, so that's, uh, that's derivatives. So it turns out you can also you do integration using some, uh, you know, inverse trigonometric functions as antiderivatives. Like for instance, integral one by root of a square minus x square is sine inverse of x by a. This is just standard antiderivative methods. X square has to be less than a square, right? Only then this is uh, meaningful. Only in that domain you can use this. Uh, but once you do that, this is come. This comes out to be true. 
because I know sin inverse of x is 1 by root of 1 minus x square. No, you do this, you will get this answer. Okay, so just using the antiderivative, you will get these very nice answers. Likewise, 1 by a square plus x square, antiderivative is tan inverse, right? So, you get a tan inverse of x by a. This is true for all a, it's no problem here. So, these kind of rational forms with square roots and no square roots, one can use the inverse trigonometric functions to compute the uh, integral in closed form. Once again, you do not have to remember this, you know, psi, sim pi for instance will, will know all this by heart. You just put this function in the integration, it will tell you the answer. But, but the idea is, uh, you know, do not have to be scared about, uh, you know, being rational form integrations, inverse trigonometric functions will help you. Okay, so likewise here, you know, slightly more complicated, you have to do secant inverse mod x by mod a and, you know, I mean all these formulae are, it's so many of them. Uh, it is it's, it's important to know that the answer will be in terms of inverse trigonometric functions. The exact form you can get through some uh, computational tools that are available today, okay. So here are some problems, you know, just to show you uh, how these things are done. The first problem, you know, like for instance, the way to do this sin inverse half, right, you know what sin inverse half is, you know, it will be like pi by 6 or something and then you put tan pi by 6, you will get the answer. Likewise, tan inverse 1 will be pi by 4 cosecant inverse 1, uh, you know, you, you have to figure out uh, what the values will be pi by 2 and then you add those two, you get secant, like, like that. I mean, it's just, uh, and then you may, you may want to simplify cos of sin inverse of x, uh, you'll get like, you know, pi by 2 minus something and all that. So, it's just, it's, it's easy to do these things. Uh, so, you know, the, the carefully one can uh, set it up. So, for instance, here this kind of thing, uh, you should say theta equals sin inverse of x. So, you get x equals sin theta. So, this is cos theta will be root of 1 minus uh, x square, right, and that, 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 that's all will this, this expression will be, okay. So, so you can do the same wise here, theta equals tan inverse of 2x, 2x equals tan theta and then you want secant 2x, right, secant 2x you can write in terms of uh, tan 2x and then you will get to the answer, okay, uh, the tan and you will get the answer. So, it is reasonable to do these kind of simplifications uh, and you should know how to do it. Likewise with these integrals, so you can think of all these integrals, it looks a bit scary and all of these can be solved using trigonometric substitution, okay. So, that is a very powerful idea. You see this 4x minus x squared, uh, 4x squared plus 4x plus 2, there is a method of completing squares and you can do substitution here, uh, various types of, for instance, this x squared plus x squared and all uh, looks a bit scary. You can use the combination of parts and substitution. If you use parts, you will get, you know, x times log plus, you know, 1 by a square plus x square and 1 by a square plus x square, you will get tan inverse, okay. But no need to be scared of all this, let us try, okay. So, uh, what I have done here is I have opened up a Python notebook and I am starting to use SymPy here. I have imported everything from SymPy and we needed the printing, this is standard code here and then I made a symbol as x and then let us try and see if we can integrate this, right. So, we are trying to do some integration, what is the integration we want to do uh, by root of 4x minus x square. So, SymPy has some integral, I think. Uh, Let us try that. Uh, we can do integral of, I think, uh, 1 by sqrt of 4 into x minus x into x and then comma x, I think, I think this might work. Let us try that. That's a problem. Let me just try this. Mm. Integrate. I'm sorry, that's the mistake. So it's not integral. It's integrate. Okay. So this would work. Just watch what happens. So you see that there yeah, you got the answer, right? So it gives you a sine. A sine, by the way, is uh, is arc sine. Arc sine is another name for sine inverse. Okay. So a sine is arc sine. So don't be alarmed of this a sine. So instead of sine inverse, people would write a sine cos inverse would be a cos, uh, tan inverse would be, you know, a tan, a cot like that, okay. So, you notice how easily one can do integrations when this day and age, you do not need to remember all complicated formulae. Uh, but the way you actually do it by hand is to complete the square here and then make a substitution and uh, x equals sin theta and you will get this answer, okay. So, anyway, I mean, it it's looks a little complicated here and, uh, but, but you can see how easily you can do this. Likewise, you can do everything else, right. So, any other problem you have here, you can put it in, it is, um, you know, let us try dx by uh, 4x square plus 4x plus 2, right. So, if you want that, I keep doing the wrong thing here, 4x square plus 4x by 2, uh, instead of this function, you just put here 4x into x, be careful about Python syntax, 4 into x plus 2 and then uh, that is it. So, I, I just run this, 
uh, I'm going to get uh, okay. What happened here? Four into see, I forgot the Python syntax. Be careful about the Python syntax. And once you do that, you'll get the answer. Look at that. A tan two x plus one by two. Okay, so it gives you tan inverse. So this day and age, you don't need to remember the method here. Once again, the method involves completing of squares. I'll urge you to look it up if you're keen on how to find uh, these kind of methods. And then likewise, you can do, I mean, maybe, maybe we'll try, uh, you know, log C. But the problem is when, when, when you have A squared plus X squared, usually this will give you some crazy answers, okay? So uh, if you try, you know, uh, log A squared plus, what do you do with A squared, right? So A, A squared is a bit complicated. So what I do in that case, is I'll put some manually some values for uh, a, right? So instead of uh, a square, maybe I'll put a equals two, okay? And then I will try, you know, uh, what happens to this. So notice here, you see you got an answer here. It involved x log x square plus four minus two x plus four tan inverse x by two, okay? So instead of uh, three square, if you try nine, uh, you know, if you will get one more pattern here, x log uh, x square plus nine minus two x plus 6 a tan x by 3. So, so you just do for a few cases of a, you will see the pattern very quickly and you will be able to write it. But if you try with a squared, you will run into some trouble. I mean, it, it gives you some other answer which may not be what you want, okay? But it's good to know how to do this. The way to do this is, you know, a squared plus x squared, you do the substitution x equals a tan theta, but that you do after parts. You have to use parts once and then you will get it, okay? So all these kind of tricks are there. You can try any of these things and you'll get the answer, okay? So I'll really urge you to use SymPy. It's a very simple open tool that's available and you can do all these integration very, very easily, okay? So I'm not gonna to spend too much time in this course uh, teaching you these techniques for integration. Uh, there are many of them are available. You can go look it up in the OpenStack, uh, OpenStack's uh, LibreText textbook. They'll walk you through many of these problems and teach you how to use it by hand, do it by hand. Uh, but for us, SymPy is good enough, okay? But just know that these integrals uh, can be done in close form. Okay, thank you very much.